Good afternoon, Dr. Seti. Uh, can you hear me? Greeting from Russia, from Moscow. Yes, good afternoon. Good afternoon from here in New York. Can you are hear you, us? You are on air, yes. Yes, Next can you hear us? For us, endoscopic ultrasound, wide radio frequency ablation, new and very interesting therapeutic approach for pancreatic neuroendocrine tumors. You are on air, please. Yes, good, good afternoon from New York. Can you hear us? Yes. Okay, perfect. Well, on behalf of the endoscopy team here at New York Presbyterian Columbia University Medical Center in New York, we are really honored to be a part of this endoscopic global village we've been watching, and it's been an excellent program. Um, and we are very excited that the situation with COVID is better, that we are able to welcome you into our endoscopy suite. So today we are going to do, or at least attempt, endoscopic ultrasound radiofrequency ablation. This is a neuroendocrine tumor. This is a gentleman with multiple liver lesions, as well as multiple pancreatic lesions for the past two years, who has remained stable on chemotherapy. However, his most recent scan showed increase in size of a head lesion that also started to develop a biliary obstruction. He'd previously been stented, and now we are going to perform ablation. The thought by his physicians and the patient himself was to try to avoid a Whipple procedure and the associated comorbid uh, morbidities. So we have here a Taiwu EUS RA Pro. It is similar to an EUS needle. I will show the, a picture of the electrode after the procedure. But just to show the setup a little bit, um, it has a proprietary generator. This is monopolar energy. There's two grounding pads on the patient. It's not about the Say that? Can you hear? Yes, yes, of course. Please. Okay, there's two grounding pads on the patient. The needle is connected to the generator. It is also connected to an irrigation system. So the needle is going to be continuously bathed in saline in order to allow for the cooling during the actual ablation and prevent sticking of tissue to the needle and will allow for more continuous uh, treatment. There's three different sizes of needles um, and we choose the size based on the size of the lesion. We've measured this lesion to be about two centimeters by three centimeters and therefore we are going to um, choose a, a, a 10 millimeter probe. The size of the probe determines the amount of energy that we will use and the timing of the actual treatment. So here on the generator is where we set our, have our setting. We are on a continuous mode and with a 10 millimeter probe we will do 30 watts of energy and for 20 seconds. We also have an impedance monitor. We are trying to achieve an impedance of 800 ohms. If we do not reach this, it might suggest that there is a degree of heat sink. So now I am going to try to enter the lesion with the probe itself. You see the metal stent um, up above. This is a stainless steel catheter which means that it is very stiff compared to an EUS needle. So the one difficulty is in determining, is in positioning, but you can see the needle entering the mask there. You see that? Yes, we see, we see needle. Okay.
the area of effect of the treatment is about 9 millimeters, a little bit less, by 15. Um, so placing it here, we'll be able to treat a portion of this lesion. So now we're ready to go. Our irrigation is running. And I'm going to press the pedal, which will start the actual ablation. So I started the ablation. And we are looking at the timer, and we are looking at the impedance. And um, we should see some bubbling soon of tissue. There you can see. You see the hypo, hyperopoic bubbling that's occurring? This reflects treatment, ongoing treatment. OK, OK. And can you tell me how to determine the completeness of uh, the tumor? Uh, when do we need to stop procedure? So we just stopped. I stopped because we reached about 30 seconds. It does have an automatic cutoff. But if that does not turn off, it means the impedance has not been reached. So I just turned it off because we reached our time limit. And so now I will come up with the catheter, and I will actually try another treatment just at the top edge here. OK? OK, so OK. Start, start it again. This will be another 20 seconds. There you can see the bubbling. So the ablation is ongoing. You see that? So there's uh, not very much data, but the largest series is by Mark Bartes group of 12 patients that shows 85% efficacy um, with these tumors. This is a non-functional tumor. Um, so in terms of measuring efficacy of this treatment, we will basically, in this patient, look for lack of progression of his tumor. So now I have treated the areas that I can access, so I'm going to come out with the needle. And I will just show you the very tip of the needle so you can see the electrodes. Before I did this, I did take uh, a biopsy. This is proven neuroendocrine tumor. But I wanted to have a pre-ablation uh, sample of tissue. Okay, Marita, uh, how many cases did you do already? Of, of ablation? How many cases you have? So oh. I have done less than 10 cases. Here you can see, I don't know if you can see this. Right this is the electrode, but we have some images that we can also show you. Okay, so that is this case. Since this patient does have an indwelling um, biliary stent, we will exchange the stent out. My team will exchange the stent out and just clean the duct. Interestingly, we did talk to the patient that at another time we might also consider biliary, uh, biliary ablation with an intraductal RFA catheter as well. So I'm going okay. to come out and... Question. I have one more question. Have you had any experience with uh, ablation of other tumors? Uh, for example, pancreatic yes. neoplasm. Yes, this has been used for mucinous, uh, for cystic neoplasms of the pancreas um, as well. The, um, typically, the fluid, or it's suggested that the fluid should mostly be aspirated out in order to allow for adequate treatment effect to the actual solid tissue. Um, again, the numbers of treatments has been, is very few. The largest case series is partase that does include mucinous um, or cystic uh, pancreatic neoplasm. Okay. So, um, tell me for timing. Because the second case is by video, and I just need a moment to transition to go show the setup for that. 
Thank you, thank you very much, uh, Dr. City, for this fantastic case and demonstration. Congratulations. We will be waiting this technology in our country. And I think we need to move to the next video case demonstration with Professor Fyodorov. Thank you very much for a nice presentation. Nice demo.